Greetings, my name is Alan Thorne and welcome to bnd.biz. You know, a lot of people often ask me the question, what's a great way to create health? That is character health, health for the player, health for enemies, and even health for objects. Objects like swords and shields can have health points that can be used up when they expire. In this movie, I'm going to show you a really great way to create health points for pretty much any kind of object you could imagine. So in this movie, we're going to take a look at how to create health points for characters and objects. And, you know, let me start by saying there is a really bad way to do this. And I've shown you how to do that. It's in this really bad health script. Let me just double click and show you this basic health script and say briefly why it's really bad. So maybe you've seen a health script like this. Obviously, this one's called really bad health script. You're not going to see script files named that intentionally. But also beneath here, you're going to have a floating point variable that is used to represent the amount of health points for the character and then inside the update function we're constantly checking to see if the health points for the character have been reduced to zero or below in which case they're dead now this is like the doctor or the medic that is constantly checking every single frame are you dead yet are you dead yet are you dead yet that's a complete repetitive test and it really doesn't need to happen because the only time we ever need to check the health points is when they actually change this update method has no idea whether the health points have changed or not that's why this script is a complete waste of processing power we don't need to be checking the health points that long or that frequently at all. So I'm going to quite happily delete this script file. This is not what you want to do. So let me just minimize the script file here. And with pleasure, I'm going to select the script file, right click and delete it and then choose delete to confirm that. Now let's look at the proper way or at least a really great way to do it that's pretty general and can be applied to any object. Take a look at the scene I've got in front of us here. On the left hand side I've got this NPC character that I've called Jeff. Now Jeff is standing right next to this big square of red and we're going to imagine that this big square of red is a dangerous bubbling lava pit and when Jeff stands on the lava pit he's going to be damaged, his health will be reduced. Let's take a look at how we could do this using a really great health script technique. I'm going to move down here to the project panel, right click, choose create, and then choose C sharp script to create a new script file. I'm going to call this health, press return on the keyboard, and simply drag and drop the health script here onto Jeff, our Jeff character. Now moving forwards, when we complete this script, we're going to be able to drag and drop this onto absolutely anything we want to give it health scores or health value points. I'm going to jump over to Visual Studio to start creating this script. Actually, I've still got the really bad health script here. I really don't want that visible. Instead, I'm going to double click our health script to bring that into view here. So the very first thing that I want to do with our health script is I'm going to create a variable that tells us the starting health points for our character. So that's going to be public float and I'm going to call this starting health and we can set this to pretty much anything we want. Typically it's going to be set to 100 here. So here is our starting health. Now in addition to this, I'm going to be using C sharp properties to keep track of when the health points actually change so we can respond to those changes. So I'm going to divide this into two particular variable types. If you're not familiar with C sharp properties, you can check out our C sharp properties video here at bnd.biz. So I'm going to create the property here. First of all, I'm going to start by creating a private variable, which is going to be our health points. And then in addition to that, I'm going to create the public accessor here. So I'm going to choose public float and then I'm going to put health points like so. Now this is going to be structured slightly differently. We're going to have the get property, which is going to return the actual value of the private health points variable. And then we're going to have a set accessor variable here that is going to be used for not only changing the health points, but validating what they are and detecting when changes happen so we can notify key events to say, hey, we're dead now, health points have changed. So moving to the set accessor here, I'm going to set the health points to the value here. 
That is any value we're going to specify. We'll see how to use that shortly. But effectively, this keyword here, value, is going to stand in for the new health points that we want to change it to. Now I'm going to use a mathf.clamp to ensure that the health can only be between valid values. It can only be between zero and our maximum, which is going to be 100 in this case. The next thing I want to do here is to have the check to see what the health points have changed to. And if they have reduced down to zero, then that means that we are dead. So here are the health points of the structure of this property here. So in the start function, I'm going to select my health points and I'm going to set them to the starting health value here so that we're setting these points. We no longer need the update function, completely unnecessary because every time our health points change with a statement like this, it's going to navigate into that set accessor method here so that we can detect when we die. So I'm going to save these code changes first of all and minimize our script file and go back here to Unity and just select the Jeff character here and in the inspector we can see that we have our starting health points here. Now the next thing I'm just going to do to check these health points and to make sure that our script file is working as intended, I'm going to select our danger zone lava pit here and configure this so that we can apply damage to this character here. So I'm going to create add component, I'm going to add a box collider here, I'm going to make sure that this is set to is trigger and extend the size of the collider, bringing that up into the scene so that the character can enter that. Now, of course, we need to also select the Jeff character that we've created, add a rigid body component so that he can walk into that box. And I'm also going to enable, enable here the is kinematic field. And in addition, apply a box collider to approximate the volume of our character. And again, as luck would have it in this instance, it appears way down here. So I'm just going to raise that up to roughly approximate our character. Something like this is looking pretty good. Now the next thing that I'm going to do here is I need to create a really quick script file that I'm going to apply to the danger zone here that is going to detect when the character enters the danger zone so that we can apply damage to the character. To do this, I'm going to right click, choose create, choose C sharp script, and I'm simply going to call this danger zone and apply that to the danger zone object here. So drag and drop that onto the danger zone. Double click that to bring that into Visual Studio here. And the only thing we really need on this is to have an on trigger enter function. And when the character enters the trigger, I'm going to apply damage to the character. So I want to grab the health script, that is this health script here, when the character enters the danger zone. So I'm gonna grab health, I'm going to call that H, grab the health component from the object that's entered the trigger. So something like this. I'm going to also validate to make sure that this object does in fact have a health component. So if it equals null, I'm simply going to exit the function. If not, we're going to proceed by applying damage. Now in this case, I'm going to grab the health points C sharp property here. And I'm going to reduce that by a damage speed of, let's say, 10 points per second. So 10 multiplied by time dot delta time to reduce those damage points. If I wanted to customize this, I could have a public variable up here for that. So for example, well, you know what, let's do that. So I'm going to say damage points, and it's going to equal 10 points of damage. Replace that here so that we can always customize this inside the inspector. And I'm going to save that code. That is going to reduce the health of anything that has the health component entering the trigger. To, to view the actual health points reducing over time, I'm going to move down to our private health points variable and make that a serialized field so I can see this value inside the inspector. Let's minimize Visual Studio here. I'm going to select the danger zone to make sure that we have our danger zone script applied and also select the Jeff character here to ensure that we have the health script. If I now press play on the toolbar, let me just move the game tab here so I can view the scene tab. Press play on the toolbar. I'm going to grab our character here and then move him inside the danger zone like so. 
and actually you can see here the health points have been reduced just as I've entered the script. The mistake I've made here actually is that for as long as we're standing inside the lava pit, we want to reduce health. So the mistake I've made is to go back to the danger zone and we want to change this not on trigger enter, but on trigger stay. That continually happens frame by frame for as long as the character is standing inside the collider. So I'm going to press play again, grab our Jeff character, make sure I can see his health points here, and then move him inside the danger zone. And you can see straight away that our health points are reducing. Now, of course, what happens if we want to do something when the character dies? Well, that's really easy too. I'm going to go back to our health script and I'm going to create a completely new function at the bottom here that is simply going to be called die. And in this case, I'm just going to destroy the game object like so. So that here, when we have the if statement to check our health points, we can then run the die function. So now if I press play on the toolbar and I'll move our Jeff character inside the danger zone here, the health will reduce until eventually it gets all the way to zero. And when it gets to zero, the character is going to be destroyed. We'll see that here. And there he is, pop. He vanishes from existence because his health has expired. So that's a really great way in which you can create an effective and optimized health script for all the different objects in your game. When the health reduces to zero, things are destroyed and this works really effectively. Now this script file is available for download from bnd.biz. Check out the link to this video. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Alan Thorne, and this has been bnd.biz on showing you how to create optimized health script files for objects in your games.